This podcast was brought to you by Uncle Jeep Productions. Hey guys, and welcome everyone to the Drip and Jeep Podcast. I am your solo host this week, Uncle G, because we are doing a Drip and Jeep Selects episode. That is when Dripper and I are away for this week, and we're not able to get you a live episode. And for this week's Drip and Jeep Selects, we're bringing back an old but good episode. It's actually pretty recent. It's the last episode of season three, unofficially, of course, and the uh, the final live stream of 2023, where we had guests Chest and John Ebo. You can find their links down below. Make sure go check out both of those guys uh, and their content. They make great stuff. They're great friends of the podcast. We've had them on many times, and this is no exception. This episode was a blast. Uh, Drip was actually sick for this episode, so Drip is not in this episode at all. It is just me, Chess, and Johnny talking about Nintendo's year of 2023. It was such a wonderful time, and we hope you guys stick around to watch the full episode if you haven't watched it yet. Oh, one more thing. Before we get on to the episode, I want to let you guys know that we were a guest, and by we, I mean me, was a guest on the Communications Error podcast. I'm going to link that episode down below. Uh, that's a brand new episode that they released. I was a guest. Drift was supposed to be there, but was unfortunately unable to make it that night. So that episode just released. I'm going to link that episode down below as well. Go check that one out after this one. I'll link it at the end of the episode as well. Um, but yes, go check out the episode with the Communication Error guys. Chess, uh, or excuse me, uh, John Ebo and Jeezy were wonderful hosts to me, uh, and it was a great conversation talking about video games. And uh, hopefully you guys check out that episode directly after this one. So thank you guys. And I'll cut right into uh, this episode, Nintendo's 2023 Year in Review. This is the first time I like have two people who don't even know each other. Exactly. <laughs> and so this is extra difficult for me. <laughs> Hopefully you guys just gel perfectly without without you know any necessary. You know, I don't need to step in like your, your mother. Okay. Don't don't get any fights over there. You two up there, <laughs> make sure you pe- keep your hands yourself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first things first. March 2023 this year. Uh, chess. You joined us. March 10th. Which happens to be Mario Day, and that's a that's a big reason why you're on the show because you're like the Mario guy. Like you play a, a whole bunch of of Mario Maker on stream, and like we very much enjoy watching you play that. Um, so we appreciate we, it, man. We, we, we as far as who we know, we couldn't think of anybody better to to have on the show. I appreciate it, man. At the time, and uh, yeah, you were, you were telling a story. I'll let you continue and finish your story here. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we 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 asked uh, Chess. This is his first time on our show. Uh, this is our first time talking to Chess. Like, you know, with our voices, we text him in his chat but, and then, you know, private messages, but never actually on a microphone. Uh, and I, I asked Chess, like, in secret, like, hey, yo, it, March 10th is Drip birthday. Do you think you could quickly play happy birthday for him? Because Chess, uh, Johnny, if, if, you're not, if you didn't know, uh, Chess has like a bunch, he's a musician. He's got a bunch of instruments he likes to play, a little percussion stuff, and uh, <laughs> and also a little keyboard. So we asked, yo, can you can you play happy birthday for, for Drip? And you, you, you rose to the occasion, Chess. We're very thankful. But t- tell the story. Well, basically, I, I don't know. When you when we mentioned it pre, pre, uh, pre-stream or pre-podcast, yep. uh, I remember that I told you, like, okay, we're going to make it happen. But I can't really figure out, like, how to do it with Discord. And I'll see what I can do. I'll do my best. Because for the stream and the Discord, you know, at that time with that setup, it was, things were a little bit different. So then we're live and we're doing the podcast and you're like, chess, take it away. And it was supposed to be a big surprise. And I started playing, I, I would start playing the, the, the thing on the piano. And I literally was like, okay, let's do this. We're live. And I was like, no sound. I was like. <laughs> I turned around and I went to the mixer and I just like pressed this one. Like it was just such a, a quick moment. And I figured it out like so quickly. Then I came back and there was sound. I was like, oof. <laughs> <laughs> because we're live. You don't want that dead air or whatever. But it was so quick. It was like, ah. Boom! It was so cool. <laughs> it, you, it was, it, I, I wouldn't even. I actually didn't know. I didn't know that you. I know that it was uh, muted, but uh, for like a second. But I didn't oh, know that. Okay. I didn't know you were panicking oh, wow. inside. I thought like, oh, you're like, yeah. oh, it's 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 this. It's, 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 oh, I, I, this happens all the time. You just press this one button right here because that's what it looked like. It looked like you just like, oh, let me just go press yeah. this button and that's our plan because that's that's, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> I I'm just glad that it wasn't like, oh my, let me figure out the sound. Oh no, right, right, you know. Oh yeah, dude, you, you somehow nailed it. I you figured, nailed I, it. I thought I had it, but then you know whatever. It was my first time kind of doing playing. Uh, you know, I, I typically use this mic and this mic is, uh, USB. Right. Yeah. So I can't really hook it up to my mixer. 
uh, I can do this mic, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, this one's just better sounding quality for for like stuff like this, you know? For sure, for sure. Uh, and stuff, I know you you surprised the hell out of Drip there because Drip was like, "Wait, wait, is there something I don't know?" <laughs> it's like, yes, <laughs> there is. So that was fun. <laughs> uh, also, I think that episode we just talked about it was Mario Day, so we talked about some more Mario stuff. Um, I think we talked about your your favorite three D Mario's in that episode as well. Um, yeah. Uh... My number one is Galaxy. Galaxy One. That's right. Yeah. I do. I do. So here's, you know, I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> this is what's going to determine if I like you or not. All right. So do you like Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World more? I think that if I were to go to a desert island, I would take Mario 3. Okay. I like you. We're we're good. We're all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. I mean, they're both really fun and you know, and I don't know. But yeah, Mario Three. But you're gonna be disappointed at me. Uh oh. This is my favorite one. <laughs> oh, I'm not disappointed. I love that one. That was it's Mario so Two. Unique. Yeah, I well I'm not gonna say I, I'm gonna say right ahead. I'm going to go right ahead and say that Mario 3 is a better game, okay? It's more complete. They went back old school, whatever. And I know that this this game is, you know, uh, you know, used to be Doki Doki Panic and all that. They changed it. But as a kid, I didn't know. And I loved it. And nostalgically, this is my number one. So, Get behind yeah. that. I, Super Mario Bros. 2, I love that game. It's so weird. Yeah. And... Just picking Bizarre. stuff up too. I remember, like, just like you can pick stuff up now. <laughs> when you think about it, it felt like, like what what not a lot of companies do. A lot of companies, they're like, you know, Mario two, or they add like one, you know, Mega Man. Now you have, now you can slide Mega Man three. You can slide now. Right. But at the time. When I saw the stuff you could do and the bombs and and Mouser as a kid, I saw this this uh this commercial on TV. It blew my mind. I was like, I need that game. I literally was like, I need that. And I think that's why why nostalgically, it's always gonna be my number one. You know, for sure, man. I think this is interesting watching you guys like literally talk for the first time in your lives live on a podcast i think this is very very it's fun i'm sure yeah, it's fun anything, for me. anything can happen anything can happen so it's like yeah it's like going to a gig as a musician and you're like hey what's up i'm the new bass player yeah nice to meet you or or especially chess you know because we're, we're both percussionists especially like if you're working with another percussionist in a gig it's like we're gonna be working like our ass cheeks are gonna be touching right now depending on the space we have it's like we, like we gotta really acquaint ourselves real fast and like don't mind me and don't mind you let's get our jobs done here um but yeah so uh anyway moving on here uh i, I want to re bring this up back uh what so that's not english i want you to bring this back up again because i was watching that episode earlier chess and just to get some ideas from some some, some talking points from it you had uh -huh. talked about uh, the church of nintendo and okay. I, th I think it's worth bringing it back up again because i know most yes. people don't really know what that is i certainly didn't so feel free to, to tell that story that again for everybody i'm gonna i'm gonna say it but i'm gonna preface with this i'm gonna talk about an event that i that i went to called church of nintendo but here's the thing you might not find a church of nintendo in your town but you might find an event similar to this and i recommend people to go out there so here's the story i had not played video games for 20 years with two exceptions Number one, I bought a GameCube and I played Zelda Wind Waker, Metroid Prime, and Mario Sunshine. And it was like a year that I played and then I went back to music. I was like, I got to learn drums. I got to play drums. No video games. Like literally since the age of 14. For some reason in my head, I got in that mode. And also I played at my sister's house, Galaxy, Mario Galaxy. So that's probably why, you know, I'm attached to that game nostalgically. So in, in 20 years, I played for one year and maybe like seven months or however it took. Maybe it was like two months that I beat Galaxy. But anyways, uh, I was out of nowhere just watched, reading the newspaper and there, there was a thing that said Church of Nintendo, honorable mention, best of the bay, Tampa, Florida. 
honorable mention. It's, uh, you know, they didn't win an award. They do this award thing in Tampa. So they were like, yo, uh, you know, honorable mention. These guys are super cool. I was like, Church of Nintendo? What? I'm there. <laughs> so I went there. And man, original cartridges, old CRT TVs, original consoles. We're talking two NESs, two SNESs, 164, sometimes a GameCube, a Wii, people playing bowling. I was mind blown. And I started going there every Monday. And I met some cool people there too. And, and they're still friends from like eight years ago. So basically that got me back into gaming and it just kind of blew my mind to pick up a cartridge, you know, blow on it oh, and yeah. then put it in there and play with the original controllers. And that blew everybody's mind. And, uh, you know, there's hangouts and, and that has actually expanded. I actually have another friend who started it in Denver. I actually hosted two of these events in Panama. Panama, Central America, and I've asked for permission. They're like, do it. And we, I got together with a friend down there, and we, we put up an event called Church of Nintendo, and it blew people's minds. Like, they were like, I gotta, what are you doing? I got to find, find one of these. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Chess, this There's was a... events like that. Yeah, go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this this was a time uh, where, like, but this is before the retro gaming boom. So we think prices yeah. were cheaper, things were more accessible. It was, so I feel yeah, like it was, I feel like in today's day it would be much uh -huh. more difficult to get like do something like that because like yeah, everything's yeah. so expensive. What do you what do you think? Well, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you, like collection wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I have a friend who does it in Denver, and yeah. yeah, I think it's more. Yeah, you you do it maybe emulation or or you know with oh with, uh, interesting what we did in Panama. To be honest, it's still you're still playing on the on the same controller and console, mm -hmm. but you have a never drive, ah. which is playing the ROMs, which yeah. is the same thing. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. So you're you're playing the ROMs and you're it, you're using the this this and and you know that way you can have unlimited games. Yeah, it could be tougher, but to be honest. The the video the retro video game market has has always kind of been been expensive and stuff like that and I mean it, it, it goes up and down yeah. but uh, this was like eight years ago and the guy who 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 ran it he's a collector anyways so it's more like people who have a collection that are willing to do stuff like that right. I think it would be very expensive to be like. Yo, I'm gonna do. Well, you can do it, but you're not gonna have a lot of the good games. For example, you're you might miss out on some like you know Battle Toads, because that's like a fifty dollar game. Same with Contra, you know. But you can buy. I, I bought a lot of this stuff. I'm not a collector, but let me tell you how much this game was. Can you guys guess how much this was? And I bought it on the street. I mean, at, at a uh, video game for store. For the audio people and me, because my eyes are old. Uh, what is what is Blades of Steel? Blades, Blades okay. of Steel. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't even have a clue yet. Anything, Johnny? Three yeah. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely not going to happen today. That's for damn sure. <laughs> no, but, I'm pretty yeah. sure. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure that if you go to a retro, this is what I did, and I yeah, didn't yeah. realize it until later. F find, go online and find retro video game store there are lots of stores in a big city of course if you're right. in a small city it's going to be tough but in a big city you will find stores that specialize in that i i every time my friends come to visit this guy came to visit me i was like dude let's go to a retro video game store he bought a nintendo 64 bunch of games he was mind blown and you know you can buy uh, you know at that time you could get a Nintendo for $50, maybe $70. I'm pretty sure that today, 80 bucks. Right. A, an actual NES or a SNES yeah. for like 80 bucks, maybe a hundred. But yeah, it, it went up a little bit, but it's not, it's not like inaccessible. Again, a lot of these games that I bought, I remember, you know, treating myself and buying this for 20 bucks. Because Mega Man 2 is like, so for my birthday, I haven't bought a cartridge in so long, but I like having these cartridges. I just kind of bought like Paperboy, 
and stuff like when I was small. But a lot of it is donation. A lot of people gave me games because I was posting on Instagram and, and Facebook. Right. People are like sending me boxes. This guy sent me a box with like a Nintendo 64, a GameCube. I mean, uh, uh, this guy sent me a box of a bunch of games, you know. So a lot of this stuff has either either been cheap or, uh, you know, donated. That, that's so cool. That's And that's why I wanted to bring that story back up again, because I just thought yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. I think that's, uh, even if, if, it, if the market's inflated a little bit, I think that's such a cool thing to do. And I never considered yeah. the, the emulation side of it. It never even crossed my mind that, like, you could adapt like that and just, you know, yeah. just get Everdrives and, and get stuff on there and have people enjoy the games that way. So that's yeah. that, that's incredible. Uh, that's, that's awesome. So uh, Lots of fun. Imagine just people walking in a bar, and then seeing an old TV playing Mario, they're like, oh, "What?" Un unrelated. Have you ever been? To, have you ever gone to like a barcade? No, it's just about the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> barcades are, are a blast, and it's just yeah, like it's yeah. so reliving good. your childhood going into this arcade playing Wild turtles Dark. and <laughs> yes, <laughs> so good, so good. Pinball yeah. too. Pinball, so yeah, fun. Pinball. <laughs> pinball. One of my dad's friends. Uh, yeah, obviously my dad's old um and his friend is old too but he has and he has this uh, affe uh affection for these pinball machines and he we went over his house and uh, i was like you know any kid with his dad's like ah. but he's like come come to the basement and he has a bunch like i think three of these old pinball machines like mm -hmm. really cool original ones and i had a lot of fun playing Ooh. or i think it's a couple pinball and one like regular arcade i don't remember the game but i was like yeah. this is awesome this is what adulting is like and uh yeah. fast forward not yeah, exactly. It is. <laughs> well, yes, but no, not always. <laughs> you know, can I add because, a little bit because, to that Johnny, story? because money is what I'm talking about. <laughs> what are you saying, Jess? I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I was oh, going to no, ask good? if I could add a little bit more to that story. Absolutely. Well, basically, like at the church of Nintendo, I met people, but I also like, uh, you know, one day this guy was like, hey, what are you playing? I was like, you know, I'm playing Gradius. And they're like, oh, and then you meet people. And then, uh, you know, this one guy turned out to, to stream on Twitch. I didn't I didn't even know what Twitch was back then. Uh, and he's super cool. And, you know, I don't want to mention him, but he he like he's a big part of the retro community. And here in Florida, he's big part of the retro community, too. I say he's one of the big three. But anyways, this group of, of friends that I met, they actually run the console room in Free Play Florida. Free Play Florida is an event that happens in a convention and all these people from Florida bring their pinball machines and their arcade machines. Oh, wow. And they just pack this place. It's nuts. And you pay like 75 bucks or something like that and you can play however much you want but over three days right so and they you have like the best everything and the console room is ridiculous i'm gonna tell you how ridiculous it was when i went the first time they had a doom land setup four old pcs playing doom <laughs> like oh, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> yeah they had <laughs> stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> they had uh they had like an X68000. It's where they, the computer that built that, where they made like Street Fighter, like Capcom. Like oh. what? Like stuff like that. You're like, what's going That's on? That's wild, man. I think we all need to go to Tampa. That's what it sounds like here. It's good. I to, know. To go There's to a really good here. retro scene. There's yeah. a really good retro scene. Yeah. That's awesome. That, I, I, that, I've never been uh, to Florida. I would love to, love to go. Go see chess in Florida. We'll catch you on the beach. <laughs> there's uh but but also there's places that one can look up. For example, in Tampa, there's this place called the Replay Amusement Museum. The amount of pinball machines they have at that place. And and it's like a one time fee and you go in, but it's a museum. Really? These people take care of this, like to a high, you know, high standard. And obviously you can and play them, right? They can play all Yes. Them. Oh, man. Oh, my God. And and not only that, but old school, like, arcades. Like, they have, like, Punch-Out, the old arcade. And I don't know if you know about Punch-Out, but they it had, like, two screens. And uh, 
I think that what had ended up happening with that machine, or maybe they made Punch Out because they had two screens for a game that didn't work, so they made like Punch Out. Uh, I'm talking about like Mr. Dream Punch Out. This was like before Mike Tyson's Punch Out, arcade Punch oh, Out, wow. right? And also, there's like Paperboy on arcade, and it has like a bike. Uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the bike handles. I yeah, yeah that. he has a bike handles, you know, stuff like that. Like, like what? Or I think, I, 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 you know, all sorts of games that you're like, wow, like how am I playing this stuff? And and what well, what I'm saying is that locally you can find stuff like that. There's a there's a place in uh in there's a place in Chicago that if I ever go there, I want to go. Galloping Ghost Arcade. It's ridiculous. Wait, Brett, like, put it in my phone. Don't let me forget. I live here. <laughs> I, live, I live an hour away from Chicago. I'll check it out. Dude, go to that place. Yeah. Well, what's, what's there? Yeah. Now I need to know. Galloping Ghost <laughs> Arcade. Pinballs. It's the pinballs? same concept. It's just yeah, a big yeah. place with a big bunch of pinball machines and arcades. I would love to check it oh. out. Don't, yeah, don't, let me, don't let me forget, Jess. I have a memory of a squirrel. Please don't let me forget because I would okay, I'd love okay. to check that place out. That is incredible. <laughs> Well, thank you, Chaz. What a wonderful story. And and by the way, there's, you, you were on a guest this as a second time for us. He came back in October 20th. Uh, no particular reason, just a little game that was put out on October 20th called, uh, you know, Mario Wonder or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but that was really cool. I, you you Have you even played the game at that point? I think you played on stream the night before for a few hours. Two at that player. Point. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And I remember telling you. That I wasn't ready to give you an opinion right. on the game Fair, fairly, because yeah. I hadn't really played it. But now that I have, yeah, well, go ahead. What you finish your thought there from October twentieth? What do you think? It's 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 a great game. It's fun, but personally, it hasn't really like grabbed me. Like I'll get to it one day, and I have played a lot of it, but I don't know why I I haven't like a hundred percented it. You know, I guess I'm playing other stuff, but uh, I'll get to it one day. But it's fun. I had fun. I played yeah. a two player and single player, and I think that the game works well on both uh, both ends. Sometimes that's kind of tricky, but right. I and think it it's a great game. It's visually uh, amazing. The music, the vibe, the chill vibe. I love everything. I I yeah. fell in love as I kept playing it, and I actually discovered something about myself while playing it is that I. They, every, you know, everyone has like a Zelda opinion, like, oh, 2D Zelda is the best. No, 3D. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure it happens with Mario too. I've discovered that I am a 2D Mario guy. Like, I, I'm not, I don't love the 3D Marios. There's never been one that, even Odyssey, just like, oh, wow. Just don't, don't, it's not that they're bad or anything. It's just, I don't, yeah. you know, I'll play for a couple hours and, I hear and you. five, 10 hours and I'm done, you know? Whereas like 2D Mario, I can really play for a long, long time because I just love freaking nice. A to B. I love getting from A to B. I love the new, yeah. the new style 2Ds where they get really creative with it, mainly Mario Wonder. Um, but you know, I'm a, I'm a 2D Mario guy. I'm a I've come out. I'm out of the closet, guys. I'm a I'm out of the Mario closet. I'm a 2D Mario guy. And Johnny, I I don't know if you're a 2D Mario guy, but I do know that you binge that game in like a night. Or yeah, something. yeah. I be, I 100 of that game in like 100 days or something. Like true 100. Oh, nice. Yeah, true 100. Like got all the little medals on my that's awesome. profile. I beat the the hardest level. I I love that game. The game was fantastic. Yeah. I just wish it that were that there was more. Like I just wish there was more to it. It was only like I don't know, fifteen hours. Maybe? I was gonna say fifteen oh, hours. Wow. What it took you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, but I'm like you. Like I love 2D Mario, and I've always loved 2D Mario growing up. And it probably is nostalgia. Like Super Mario Bros. Three is probably my favorite Mario game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved. Uh, I loved the original Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. Two World. I even like the new Super Mario games, like the new Me Super too. Mario Bros. U. Uh, a lot of Odyssey trash gets talked in those games, so you're making a bold statement there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I feel like they get a, a bad rap. I think people were were burned out on them. Yeah, because we mm. had two of them come out within yeah a few months of each other. I think that was the thing. The the, the Wii U version was like more of the same. Yeah. So I mean, then we had to wait. What ten years, eleven years? Wow, for wonder. So I hope that doesn't happen again. And I hope next year we get a we get a new Mario game, or you know, whenever the Something. new system comes out, we yeah. get a new Mario game. 
Oh man, that's uh, exciting. We're oh, so yeah. close. We're so close to guys. That's very exciting. No 2D Mario. <laughs> no 3D Mario. 2D and 2D Zelda. Come new on. New Mario Maker. New Mario Maker. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. So okay. So you from what I've learned is you play Mario Maker on stream. Yes. Uh, yeah. I am not a fan of Mario mm-hmm. Maker Ooh, because okay. I think Drama. people are terrible <laughs> at making levels. Okay. I think normal people... I agree, like, but there's good good people too. There's bad and good. Yeah, like my <laughs> levels are phenomenal. I think I'm the best <laughs> Mario Maker <laughs> there is. Send your levels, bro. Come on. We got to test them out. My levels are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> before, before I, uh, you know, before social media and uh, when the original Super yeah. Mario... And the, uh, Super Mario Maker came out on the Wii U. Like I had, I don't know how many stars I had. Like I had hundreds of stars. Everybody loved my levels, so I, I was Mario Maker famous for for a little bit. Nice, but I, I don't know. I can't. I get annoyed playing some levels because they're. I'll, I'm also not a huge Kaizo Mario fan. Uh-huh. And a lot of levels are Kaizo. Yeah, I do like the the puzzle levels, and I do like the ones that are kind of actual platforming. But the ones where they throw just hundreds of enemies at you. Yeah. And what type but, of I'm just curious, like what setting are you playing in? Are you playing viewer levels or are you playing expert, super expert or or so just... I, I changed it up. I was doing like I, I streamed it as well back when it came out. So I was uh-huh. doing viewer levels and most of them, I feel like they make them too hard for the streamer. I, I don't know. No, I don't know if that. No, you're that, right. That, how it is for you but i mean i, I could I, I was doing like expert not super expert i didn't uh-huh. want to deal with that yeah uh, i guess everybody has a different approach to the game like uh my approach has always been like of course i did a, a you know my fair share of viewer levels but i remember i just i just started playing precision that's what i liked somehow and it's fun and to watch I, <laughs> that's for, for sure. example like yeah, for example, like I joined Team Precision, and what's cool about joining a team is you're building and you're playing levels of something that you like. You know what I mean? And, and in terms of like Team Kaizo, a uh, Team Shell, for example, I find it that Kaizo is a is a very kind of interesting thing because everybody has their own style of making and their own style of shell jumps, so it could be kind of weird. Uh, in terms of like, oh, I'm going to play an easy level. Well, it's not only that it's e- easy or hard, but it's now you have to look at like, was this made? Like, is this my style of Kai? So it's it's like that. But whether uh, but in the case of precision, everything's straightforward. You know, sometimes you get a level where, where you're like, what is this? But, you know, and my policy is I skip what I don't like, you know, but uh Blame you. Yeah. So it's, what I'm uh, saying is that, you know, I think there's something for everybody in that game. But, you know, again, it, it depends on your trip, too. I feel like in, in, in my case, and I'm not saying I'm good at Mario Maker, but <laughs> I really love Mario Maker and I play a lot of it. I feel like we're kind of spoiled or, or I feel I've heard I've heard other people kind of say this. Like us Mario Maker players, like we 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 played uh we played Mario Wonder and it wasn't hard enough, you know, or something yeah. like that. No, like, I, I, I can see that because Mario Wonder was is not hard. Yeah. There's maybe uh, the the final level, like the the one where you have to do 100. percent That one is probably the hard level in the game. Uh-huh. But other than that, uh, none of the levels were really that difficult. Did they give you guys? I was wondering that. Pun intended. Did they <laughs> give you guys like a special, the special levels? Or something like that. Like they usually give you in Mario World, for example, Star World, you go and they give you special levels that are yeah. really hard. Did they do that in Wonder? So like in, in World, are you so there's the Star Road in World, right? Uh-huh. And then there's like the post Star Road. There's like the tubular and uh uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those levels. There's nothing as hard as as those levels. Uh, but you do have special levels like Star ah, okay. Road. Oh, and I then, see, I see. There's but a they're final, not super, super hard. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, and then there's like a final, like champion. I don't know if you played uh, yes, 3D yes. World. Yes, 3D. Champions. I was, I was Champions just about Road. to say that. That's hard. <laughs> that's a hard level. Yeah, that's a yeah. very hard level. <laughs> Is that the one where the, the there's like Bowser's on something throwing balls at you as you run down like a road in 3D World? 
No, what, what, I, levels, I, I, what level I, I, is Champions I, I, World? Champions there's Road. A, or a Champions Champions Road. Road. Isn't Champions Road like a bunch of levels? A yeah, it's like of, oh. Oh, okay. It's like a, a ton of. It's <laughs> it's very hard uh, pr- platforming. There's you know those uh, timing where the the platforms disappear and stuff like that. Disappear yeah. and then there's it's a it's a very. I enjoyed playing that level. I think I know. Yeah. What but it is I, I did finish. It is a difficult level. I, I did finish that game, uh, although my memory is again like a squirrel, yeah. so I forget. But I think I know what you're talking about now that you mentioned. I it. was going to ask you, G. I was going to ask you, uh, since you said that 2D is your jam, I was going to ask you about 3D World because 3D World, in my opinion, and I guess 2D, 3D. This is what they went. It's a 2D, 3D, or 2.5D. Yeah, because 2. 5, you're yeah. somehow like sometimes walking like in a straight kind of direction. Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. So I love 3D World. I think 3D oh, World. It's a hot take. You know, this is this is just my opinion. You know, we all got them. Uh, I think 3D, 3D World is my is my favorite. It's my favorite. That the Mar- any all the Mario games I play, which is not like a ton. I'm not a Mario kind of sore, but all the ones I have played. 3D World has uh-huh. been my my most fun, and also Bowser's Fury being on top of that at, at that addition, especially that you know that that one that came on Switch. That version is awesome because oh, I also had a ton of fun with uh, Bowser's Fury, but I had more fun with 3D World than Bowser's Fury because I, I just because uh, I don't know, man. I just I don't know what it is. It's it's not exactly like a, a 3D Mario, like you said. It's kind of like a 2D a 2D 3D or a 2.5D. Mm-hmm. I had the most enjoyment with 3D World. There's something about the openness but also yeah. linearness that like a 2d linear but also an openish 3d style that just works so well for me and i i had the most fun with that one in fact you know no offense to mario wonder but i had more fun with 3d world than mario oh, wonder nice. and i love but i love mario wonder for a, a bunch of other different reasons um but 3d world is is my favorite i had the most fun with Did it. you play two player 3D World? Oh, or I, I streamed. I streamed four player constantly on my chat and my Twitch <laughs> when when that was a thing. And Jesus, there's, like, there's with the internet lag that gets yes online when oh, the the okay, lag okay. played with viewers like with the, the lag yeah. that gets introduced. And we're on a Discord yes. call together, so we're like talking trash to each other and like we're people we're picking each other up oh, and throwing them off. Awesome. That's probably why I had the most fun with the game, to be honest with yeah. you, because we played that multiplayer you know mode. Believe it or not, I mean, this is my opinion. When the game came out. When the game came out uh, in 2013, I think it was, 2014, uh, I found that the game was boring single player. It felt like that. It can And I would play with my roommates, and it was so much fun. And then it was single player, and it was that. And also, I remember back then, not only me, but a lot of people were like, dude, why don't you give this to us online? Like, why PlayStation, Xbox, they're doing online. Like, why don't... And I literally found a quote. Somebody said, I think it was Miyamoto. We want you to play this in your couch. We don't want you to go online with random people. And oh, it's, it's, that's the way Nintendo yeah. felt back then, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, to, I bet you they still feel that way. They're just kicking and screaming. Because that's, <laughs> infras- that's why their infrastructure is so horrible to this day still. It's my guess. If, if, you know, that's, that's so dumb. I mean... That's just dumb. I, I, you know, Drip and I have gone over many times in the show, like how annoying Nintendo Online is. They, I mean, they can't get it to work. <laughs> they can't. You're right. <laughs> Quart- <laughs> quarter of the year, I right there. Mario Maker Online is probably one of the worst experiences. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Uh, certainly, certainly can be. But 3D <laughs> World, I, I did want to. I don't know how far you got in multiplayer, but there is a level that when a player jumps. The platform yes. switches sides, mm-hmm. and trying to do that with more than one person is impossible. Locally, even <laughs> you know it's it's hard yeah. enough. But then you're, t- you're adding the, adding the added uh, lag that's associated with online with 3D World, uh, and also yeah. dealing with knucklehead viewers that just want to piss you <laughs> off because that's what that's what was happening. That was so much fun. I love you guys, Joe Hero. The rest of you, name and calling you out, and then you just go. You know, so. <laughs> that, that was basically what would, a lot of times one of us would decide on our own. We're tired of nonsense, so we're gonna go ahead on our own to put you all in bubbles. Like, Stay in your bubble. <laughs> Don't you leave your bubble. <laughs> I, Man, this, I gotta say, the, mem- the memories are great. I, I love 3D World. Even I have they, to they put this off. in here. Yeah, yeah, I have right. to talk about this. Sure. The first new Super Mario, new Super Mario Brothers Wii, 
four, three player, three, four player. That is so much fun. And I did, I, I, I watched some videos and, and stuff like that. And that game, they really put a lot of space in that first game. And it really did wonders, another pun, uh, <laughs> for uh, multiplayer. And the whole bubble system and everything, man, that was so cool. That was so cool. Yeah. We my new Super Mario Bros. We my my partner. She does not play games like ever, but we we played through that game a hundred percent. And I yeah. don't know how we're how we're still together today, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> I a hundred percent did that with my roommate too. That game was amazing. I loved it. My, Absolutely. My loved partner it. and I <laughs> got into arguments over Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably one of the easier you know multiplayer games you can play with each other. There's but, there's a fine line. Like when we first started dating, we we played Monopoly yeah. together, and that almost ended it. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I have a sorry story. Oh, this is a worth it, worth it, worthy uh, whatever. Uh, I, we're still finding sorry pieces around our, our little living space here because early <laughs> in our relationship, <laughs> I, I was half joking, but I did get pretty mad with her and because she kept beating me freaking sorry. The easy, the game that requires no skill at all, you know, she kept beating me. I'm like, how are you keep beating me? This is just, it's just a luck game. Like, are I supposed to win sometimes? And I was half joking, half serious. Knocked the whole freaking board and all the pieces <laughs> went everywhere. And then to this day, we'll like go in the corner like, oh, there's the yellow. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> so that was funny. Oh, my God. Good stories. Good, good times. Uh, gentlemen, uh, well, th- by the way, Chess, you know, thank you again for coming on twice this year. This is actually the third time, technically, you know, right now is the third time. So thank you for 2023 helping us grow this year, but making our content better by gracing us. And we'll get, I'm going to, Johnny, oh, you rock. Oh, you rock too, dude. Uh, Johnny, we're going to get to your, your stuff in just a second. We're going to talk about your episodes because yours were quite enjoyable as well. And we're going to talk about the, well, I'll tell you in a second what we're going to talk about. But first, unfor- uh, not unfor- I'm saying unfortunately, it's not unfortunate. Uh, I had to pay the bills real fast. we got to talk about our sponsors today. So I'm going to switch over to this screen where it's just me. So forgive me for a second, boys. Today's sponsor is Nexigo and their new Nexigo Hall Effect uh, Grip Con. You can find the Nexigo, like all their links down below. The Nexigo uh, features Hall Effect Sticks, Gyro, Rumble, programmable buttons, two cartridge slots that you can store some cartridges in, uh, as well as a kickstand that replaces the OLED one that it knocks and improves on the kickstand of the original uh, Switch. And yes, it does fit both the OLED and the original Switch. The quality of this thing is just top notch. You can't really go wrong with it. It's incredible, but not to mention the fact that it features a dock built into the grip and it's actually good. I've been testing it. I've been using it. It works really, really well. In fact, I learned that you can use your Steam Deck dock with this if you if you take out the HDMI, plug it right in, then put the, the USB-C right in, boom, you got it. You can just utilize your Steam Deck dock that works there. You don't, don't even have to take this out if you want to use a different dock. So that's incredible. You know, I, I love the buttons. I love the, the sticks on there. The Hall Effect sticks work great. The kickstand is not the OLED kickstand, but certainly works really, really well. And is an upgrade if you have that original Switch. Uh, I've got some back buttons. It's got all the, the you know the features that you that you kind of want in a, in a Switch grip. Uh, with the additional dock inside of it, which is awesome. I know I don't need to take anything else with me when I go traveling to see my family for the holidays or anything like that. You know, no travel dock necessary. Just bring this guy with you. Um, you guys can find the Nexigo uh, GripCon over with our links down below. Uh, the website is nexigo.com. That is N-E-X-I-G-O.com. You can, buy, again, buy the GripCon directly with our links in the description. And thank you, Nexigo, for sponsoring today's episode. Hi, boys. I'm back. Yo. I actually have a Nixie controller as well. I have the It's not the Nixie. GameCube one. <laughs> it's not Nixie. It's not Nixie. It's Nexie Go. What? Nexie Go. That's oh, the, get the competition one? off the screen. <laughs> I'm no, sorry, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're, no, I'm just joking with you. No, I, I actually I, I had a Nixie as well. I actually had the, that exact controller. I recently It's a sold. different company? Yes, Nexie Go is different than Nixie. The, don't, oh for, man, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Uh, Cut it out. 
<laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, thank you, Gexy, for sponsoring today's episode. But no, for real, this actually is super awesome. If you guys ever get a chance to check it out. It does look out. really good. It, it, wor- awesome. it works as advertised. It's better than the Joy-Cons. So, I mean, win-win right there. It's cheaper than the Joy-Cons, too. So And it has a dock built in. So, I mean, that's kind of nice. Um, anyway, but no, speaking of the Nixie real fast, cause you brought it up. I did love the Nixie. I used it. Um, I actually sold it recently just cause you know, I didn't need it. I had enough of these building up, you know, <laughs> in the content space, you build up a, a few things here and there. So I'm like, I don't really need this one. <laughs> I, mean, I used it. It was fun. Uh, but I, to be honest with you, not, not related to the sponsor. This is, this is kind of what I wanted from the Nixie as far as like a, a third party Joy-Con alternative that was, didn't suck, you know, cause there's some bad ones out there. I don't like the Hari that much. I know a lot of people do. I don't. So, like, I was like, maybe I'll try the Nixie. And it, it worked, but the GameCube st- layout was a good novelty, but doesn't, like, work with every game I want to play. So, this was a nice good for Smash. That. It's only good for Smash. Yeah, it was It was nice. I did love the, I love the Octagonal Gates. I, I, I love the Nixie. I just, it was worth it for me to sell it and, and you know, get unload some stuff that I had laying around. But, um, for sure. Uh, Nixie is cool. And their colors are really cool in that. But, no, this is Nixie Go. N- different than Nixie. Different uh, companies. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I feel terrible. <laughs> you know, I came on here and I'm ruining and it. You were trying good to... to no, no it was, uh, the, it's the thought that counts, Johnny. It's the thought I was trying counts. to say, hey, I support it as well. But <laughs> I screwed it up. I support the other brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So, uh, speaking of you, Johnny, you knucklehead, you little... It'll little little. <laughs> I don't know. You're not little. Uh, <laughs> I'm offending our guests. Uh, no, but we're, <laughs> we uh, we we have found common ground outside of Nintendo. Uh, and but quickly, we did fu- the way that we met was kind of interesting, Johnny. Uh, the way that it, yeah. you know it was uh, somebody from our community hit hit you up on Twitter, I think, and tagged me in it, or whatever the case was. They were both tagged in something and said, "I would like to see Johnny John Ebo on the Drift G podcast." And I was like, "Yeah." Okay, let me let me look, and then I looked and I saw your face. And I was like, like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "That motherfucker, the guy, <laughs> the guy who threw the Skyward Sword Joy Cons that I love so much in the trash can for a laugh." <laughs> I'll send him a message. <laughs> so, so that was. I'm glad I did because it uh, turns out you're. I we, keep I keep the trash pretty clean. All right, I keep it pretty clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually dropped my Scarlet Sword Joy Cons uh, and broke the right stick, and I was very upset. But I fixed it because I can do that because I'm a professional. I'm not, but <laughs> I've, during the pandemic, one of the hobbies I picked up was uh, like get, working with some electronics. Like I got a basic knowledge now, so I could fix my Joy Con if I break. I'm like an idiot. I was so mad at myself. Um, but yeah, uh, I so just yeah. bought another set. <laughs> no, I fixed them. I didn't buy another set. I fixed them because I'm poor and crafty. <laughs> uh but no so we found we found you we, we sent you or i sent you a message over there on the on the the twitter never never x always twitter and yeah you were you were super cool and i was it was it was really cool so we we had you on and i found out watching your, your other podcast so what, what you know what's the name of your podcast i forget because i'm a bad friend so <laughs> i'm actually on two uh i'm on i i, I have communication air podcast where okay. it's not all it's not just nintendo we try to talk about gaming in general right and then i'm also on the nintendo powercast with uh n64 josh who's a great guy nice uh, very cool very cool uh so yeah i was watching some of your content after you know being brought on to you besides your tiktoks uh which i've seen you're in your, in my algorithm you know you can't get you out of there um <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry no you're good that's a, that was a joke um uh, but you are mad rhythm because I, I I watch your stuff because I like to see when you make people mad. Your comment section is probably better than Drips. At the, honestly, I thought Drips' comment section was good. Yours it's is better. Fun. Yours is better. It's, it's fun. It's, it's really good. It's a good laugh. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, so we had you on. Uh, let me look at my notes so I remember. Oh, that's right. We found out that we're from the from the Philly area. The, the, yeah. the area yeah. of the Philly. So we, we share that. I'm still there. Yeah, you still live there. Uh, I'm glad that I'm not there right now. With the boy, the birds are playing right now. <laughs> so good luck with that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it might be on fire next week. Who knows? <laughs> Greasing the poles, they're gonna have to like pre fire <laughs> extinguish the poles so people can't light the city on fire. Um, but yeah, so we, we bonded with that a little bit. We sent each other texts on Sundays, you know, just like the little pat on the shoulder. Like it's a, it'll be okay. Making sure we're okay. It, it's okay. It's Jalen okay. Jalen's gonna heal up before the playoffs start. <laughs> we know. Come on, it'll be fine. And dude. 
Oh, sorry, I'm going to talk about sports for a second. The, the, I was really happy when they demoted the defensive coordinator because, God, yeah, yeah. The, the, frick, the frickin' play calling was so bad. So, so bad. And I, I know he's a rookie play caller or a rookie uh, defensive coordinator, but that, that had to be done. I don't like Patricia. I, I, yeah. Patricia is... Well, we won't talk about that. Either. We'll talk about this later. But I don't like Patricia. But I'm ha- <laughs> but I'm happy he was there for that week or last week, and hopefully he continues. He looks on. different. He looks different. He does. Patricia. He's shaved. He's, he's slant. He's, yeah. He doesn't have. He doesn't have the beard. The, the, man. I miss the big beard. And yeah, and the, the crazy hair. Sweatshirt. Yeah, like, yeah, bring it back. On, bring gotta, back the crazy. That's your brand. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, we bonded about that, and we and also well, and during your uh, first visit with. Uh, um, episode with us which by the way if you guys in the in the description of this podcast you guys can find not only the links of these guys channels but you can also find the episode the direct links to their episodes they were on if, if you guys want to check those out after this uh, stream is over um but yeah so we we, we talked about uh the well I, I was i was gonna segue into something but i forgot so i'm just gonna bring this up we had you on and <laughs> the first thing i learned about you uh, is the 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 segment that shall not be named of your life, which is the the the, the, piracy, <laughs> the piracy. The piracy. You want to tell that little little nugget of story for people and Jess, seeing as you guys are literally meeting each other right so, now. So, <laughs> I mean, you talked about emulation earlier, and there's a fine line between emulation and piracy. Now, so <laughs> like, I forget how this is probably like two years ago now. Over two years, I think yeah. it was twenty one, maybe. I made a. This is on me. I phrased it poorly, but like I made a video, a TikTok video saying, can we agree that piracy is bad? Because this was back like when <laughs> Metroid Dread came out and there's all those stories about, you know, yeah. here's how you emulate Metroid Dread without right. paying 60 bucks. Oh, and, wow. oh my God. Uh, that was a bad idea. Like just <laughs> posting that video. Asking the internet to, to get along and agree. You, what, what do you mean? That, how could that possibly back? Especially backfire? about something like that. That was brutal. Like I was, there was so much hate thrown my way. There was, there was subreddits set up about me because of that. <laughs> oh, wow. Like I'm like, dude, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal that's okay there's a bunch of cheeto dust all over that subreddit you don't really need to get anywhere near that those guys yeah and then those- and it still comes up to this day because on that same episode we talked about mortal mortal Kombat on switch and my video for mortal Kombat on switch went went viral on twitter and then like the first comment on it said isn't this the guy that said piracy is bad <laughs> <laughs> this is like two years ago haunts you <laughs> Well, that's the yeah. thing about the algorithm, dude. Away. Your content from two years ago, no. someone just finds it today, and it's suddenly it's brand new to them. So you'll, ne- yeah. you'll never, and never, uh, whatever. I, I got through that part, and uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just own it. And it's not like I was wrong. It's not like I was wrong. No, you weren't. Like I wasn't necessarily. I wasn't wrong. It was just I probably shouldn't have made that video in the first place. Yeah, it's like, it's like you saw a bear and this bear was like coddling with a child. It was like they were just hanging out. You're like, that's kind of weird. A bear is like chilling with a bear. They're like, or a bear is like hanging out with a human child. That's kind of weird. I'm going to go. I'm going to have to watch may, that. I'm going to go poke <laughs> this bear with a stick because I think, you know, maybe he's cool. And then you t- it turns out that bear wasn't cool and you get bit you. So uh, <laughs> yeah. there's one of the, one of the, like, I got so people were making videos and, and stitching and everything. And uh, one of them was hilarious. The guy like made this whole story of how like we were pirates together, like the like actual pirates, and I betrayed him. <laughs> it was just so bizarre. And I yeah, I still get like comments and likes on that video all the time. Well, it's, I mean, uh, listen, I they, they do say that uh, all uh, the, the word escapes me. All attention is good attention right but i mean yeah maybe um, you you've experienced it now so like do you think that was worth it for you <laughs> i mean it was it was an experience it was not a fun experience <laughs> uh i, I mean people know who i am now that is true probably not for the not for the the best of reasons yeah and i don't i don't know i don't hey you're if the I guy was, who throws joy cons in trash is that yeah <laughs> if i did, if if i like hurt somebody or like attack somebody i yeah i would i would regret it but it was just me saying oh i think yeah. piracy is bad and then right no just- that th- honestly that's not really i mean it's controversial because everybody is has controversy with most things these days that's the way we roll right now but as far as like what you said there 
I, I don't think it's controversial. Like, I really don't. I feel like piracy is bad, you know, because it's the piracy. We don't we look at pirates and think, wow, what, what? You know, great members of the establishment they were. What? Pirates of the Caribbean, man. That's a, <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Like, like, these people get mad. Do they realize that, like, like pirates aren't good? Like, they're funny so, and cute, but, like, that's the depiction of them we know now. Pirates of the, of the day, you know, not so fun. Not so great. You could call them bad. Right, I, might, I might annoy people. Here, I'm just going to do it again. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> so my point was you know i understand the difference between emulation and piracy right my point was you know people are are just stealing games like new games that that are easily yes. accessible that and they just don't want to pay for them yeah uh and it's okay like admit you just don't want to pay for this game it but most of the time, they're like, oh, well, what about preservation? And it's like, you don't care about preservation. You, you, you yeah. just want to play Metroid Dread for free. Like, just just admit that. I don't think we need to preserve Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread is not It's on the shelves away. right now. It's, <laughs> like, there's no need to preserve it. It's there right now. It's on sale right now. It's 42 bucks. It's like somebody buying a bag of Cheetos being like, I need to preserve these because we don't know. Where Cheetos could be tomorrow. It's like, no. I mean, it, it, it's going to be there, guys. Take a, take a chill pill. Oh, it's hard for me. Like, I, I don't want to side with these multi-billion dollar companies either. Right, like, right. Capitalism's bad. But, like, it's the it's the so society we live in. Like, yeah. we can't just steal things. Like, I can't walk into a Target <laughs> and what? steal. What? You can't just steal things. What are you talking about? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna make another video like that ever again. <laughs> That's in the past. I will. I will piss people off other ways. Oh. And I have done that yeah. other ways. Let's segue right into another way you piss people off. Um, talking about Mortal Kombat One, which is the main topic of that episode that we had you on. Although I think that's less pissing people off and more of just like exposing what WB Games did with was it WB? Is that who? Yeah, it was WB. Yeah. What, what, who, what they did with that port to the Switch. Uh, Chess, I'm not sure if yeah, you're familiar was... with, with, with that whole situation. Johnny no, I'm Johnny not. was at the, the forefront with like his pitch for it being like, this shit sucks. <laughs> this shit. Like, dude, it was the Mortal Kombat 1 got ported to the Switch. And obviously, it's a new game that was put on PS5, Xbox, PC, all that good stuff. And uh -huh. they brought it to Switch. And they really didn't put the time and effort. But I'll, I'll let you talk about it more, Johnny. You're much more qualified. Yeah, so Mortal Kombat 1... Came to the Switch same day. It's you know it's also on PS5 and Xbox Series X, so they're they're charging they charge seventy dollars for P the PS5 and Xbox Series X version and the Nintendo Switch version. Hmm. But the Nintendo Switch version is ter like it's horrible. It's it's not worth seventy bucks. So wow. I just kind of called them out on it, and uh, it blew up like. Oh wow! I, uh, my stuff got picked up on IGN, and like it blew up on Twitter, and like Ed Boon. I don't. I'm sure Ed Boon saw my stuff, but uh, he came out and said that, "Hey, we're well, sorry about the Switch version. We'll fix it." What? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I was, didn't, uh, is this an update? I don't think we talked about this then. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that happened within that first week oh, maybe of, we of release. Like, I don't, I don't remember that. But they, did they? Like did they came did, out and said, "Sorry, we'll we'll update it." Did, did they? Because I, mean, I don't have the game. I'm not buying it. I mean, they <laughs> have been updating it. It's still not great. It's not. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's on sale right now. Anyway, so you could get it for less than seventy dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's probably still not worth whatever they're charging for it. No, I mean, but yeah, go ahead. I made the decision. It was actually a really smart decision to do this. I uh, y you could get early access if you paid an extra forty dollars. So I had it before everybody else on the Switch because nobody's buying it on the Switch, right? And then uh, I posted this video like five days before release. It blew up. I made like over a thousand dollars on 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 that one video. That's awesome. So it was a huge, selfishly. It was a smart idea. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to call. I wanted to call him out. He's like, "What? You're, you're putting out crap. I don't like. You shouldn't be charging the same amount as your other versions that are clearly better." Yeah, it's it. That is a, a interesting topic of, of conversation. 
uh, hopefully it's uh, not even a conversation when we get to the, the next Switch era, whatever that happens to be, you know, whatever you want to call the next version of the Switch that we know has to come next year, at least be talked about, at the very damn least. Um, but hopefully, yeah, again, so hopefully it's not an issue, but it's interesting to talk about that where, com- you know, companies like that, that we can use Mortal Kombat 1, for example, that's getting put out on systems that are capable of running it at an acceptable level where the switch is just simply not capable of running the same game at that same level. So what do you do? Do you, do you scale it down and do like a a 3ds version of the game? Like back in the day when, you know, that was a thing. So like make it a Nintendo switch version and not, you know, and make it cheaper and make it better run better, but sacrifice a ton of things. Or do you do what they do now, which is just put the full game on there, charge the same damn price and you know you're not getting the same experience. For me, it's about the experience. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay yeah. if if it was seventy dollars on all three systems and the experience was at least comparable. When I was and when I say comparable, I mean the frame rate is steady and the resolution is sharp enough. <laughs> sharp enough. Yeah. You know, not as sharp as the other console, but sharp enough. So, Mortal Kombat was not that. So it's it is that's not here for today. Unless you guys have any opinions on that, you know. Do you, th- you think, do you, I guess my question is, do you think we should go back to that if the Switch Pro or whatever, Switch 2, can't handle games still, which mm-hmm. would be a travesty, but if it couldn't, should we go Should we go back to a method of where the Switch has mobile versions? No. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I agree. I, I really don't think, I really don't think we should go back to that era, so... But I mean, they, I'm, I'm hoping we, we don't have to worry about that yeah. in like a year. Like, I hope whenever this new system comes out, like it will at yeah. least run better than, yeah. than what I, we I have. Would, I would hope so. But there's, you know, it's Nintendo and nothing is out of the pos- realm of possibility with that. Yeah. So. But let's just hope that's not even a, uh, you know, a conversation we the, have to have. I was, I was thinking about this. Like I'm, I'm excited for the next system to be more powerful, but what I'm, mostly excited about is what nintendo can do with with it because whenever like their games they push the system to its limit yes like, when you when you play a game like breath of wild or tears of the kingdom or yeah. odyssey like those games those are phenomenal and they 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 stack up to these you know next generation ps5 xbox games so mm. i can't wait to see even if it's not as powerful as ps5 and xbox series x like what a mario game could look like on a more powerful system that yeah i I mean mario odyssey looks good but i do know that it definitely shows its age a bit if you really kind of look at it revisit it you know there's some of the grass textures or i mean not that you know zelda's any better but i feel like zelda does a better job masking it with the art style where mario it's kind of hard to do that where it's just kind of like i don't know i feel like sometimes there's some questionable textures and stuff so it would be interesting to see what like a new Mario game with that kind of art style, like the typical Mario art style, what it could look like, like running, like just for example, just throw Mario Odyssey on the PS5. What would that look like? I really, I would be really interested to see what they could do utilizing a power. Have you, have you played Ratchet and Clank? I haven't, but I've seen it. And I really, part? I would really like to play it. And is, is that the comparison you're about to make? Like a Mario? Yeah, that's what I th- like. That's how I think Nintendo games could look because that game looks like a Pixar movie. Yeah. Wow. It really it looks. That's what really wants makes me want to play it. It's not the gameplay. It's how freaking gorgeous it looks. Ratchet and, and I won't talk about the leaks, but like people need to buy that game. What leaks? What 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 game? Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, the I'm, Insomniac leaks that happened. This oh, week. you know, I dude, I haven't even looked into it. I, I my, like I told you my week uh, earlier. <laughs> I've had a crazy week, so I haven't had a chance to really like look at that fully. Uh, but that's I, know, I heard that was crazy. We'll reserve that for season four and next year. That we'll probably be talking about that with Drip. Um, but yeah, so uh, I mean, whoop, I, I lost the thing with Johnny. I was going to talk about. So we talked about Mario uh, or Mortal Kombat, and then we had you back, Johnny. We had you back on the show recently, but it wasn't even on this sh- this show. We had you back on Drip's YouTube channel for the Game Awards, and we streamed that. It was Drip. I mean, how many... I, I'm not going to name everybody because I can't remember exactly who all came on, but you were one of the guests that were on that night. It was super fun to chat yeah. with with you and everybody else and, and talk about the, the Game Awards from like a Nintendo fan perspective. It's always... Uh, it was sad. 
I mean, I, there's I, no I, Nintendo stuff. It like. was it was pretty pathetic as far as Nintendo, and like we all know, they weren't going to announce things, right? We all knew they weren't going to put out new. I didn't games. know that. I had high hopes. <laughs> you got your hopes crushed then. Uh, I, there was at one point I did think that Metroid Prime Force trailer was playing. I really like. I was kidding. It was the end of being Monster Hunter. Uh, whatever or monster hunter whatever worlds i think or what i don't know what it's called the new wilds. monster hunter it's called wilds. wilds but there was a point in that trailer where i was like wait a minute is this metroid like that looks like a freaking metroid thing and then that was monster hunter but again i didn't expect metroid i just wanted it but <laughs> i was trying to will it into existence but i we all knew they weren't going to put out nintendo wasn't going to show us a trailer but I, they could have did something you know kind of like i don't know any third party release that had Nintendo's stamp on it. We were playing a game that night. I'm sure you remember. It wasn't that long ago. We were playing yeah. a game like how many over under how many Nintendo games or how many games are going to be coming to a Nintendo platform. And what was what was, we, we get to three or four, including like Fortnite? it was yeah, three or four. I, I forget what it was. It wasn't many. <laughs> no. Like, and one was like Lego Fortnite. So right. it, it, it doesn't really count. No. Uh, it was a rough night, and uh, we, were, we were reminded in the chat that night that I think last year was even worse, like as far as Nintendo. Well, I think stance. we had the Mario movie trailer. Last we, year. I think we did. We, but as uh, in terms of gaming, it was. I believe it was worse. Like there was less things, but Nintendo. We believe that. Believe it or not, there were less things to talk about with Nintendo. But I, I, I like to say this: uh, expectation is a thief of joy. Unfortunately for me, I'd made up in my mind before Tears of the Kingdom even came out. <laughs> that it was going to be game of the year. And all year I I played Tears Game. I was like, this is game of the year. This is a game of the year. Got to the game awards. This is game. This is my game of the year. I know that Baldur's Gate and all the other nominations were, you know, deserving, but I feel to me all year long, Tears of the Kingdom, game of the year. And I had my, had my mind set on it and I wasn't crushed, but because I did call it, I called that Baldur's Gate was going to win, but it didn't make I me thought, very happy. Go ahead, Jess. I thought Suica game was going to win. I'm kidding. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Sweet. surpassed 5 million copies recently. <laughs> no. I, one of the big surprises to me, uh, and I think you as well, Johnny, was the, like, or at least me. I don't know about you. The, what was that game? The freaking uh, Alan Wake. Alan, Alan Wake. Alan yeah. Wake made a big, lots of noise at the Game Awards. Surpri surprising to me. I, I heard it's a good game, but I didn't think it was that good. Uh, turns out it was really good. Yeah, I still good. think that that was recency bias because that game came out like a few weeks before the Game Awards. Yeah, but then Spider Man. Oh, no. But then Spider Man also, same day, did not get that recency bias boost. Yeah, that's They're true. Interesting, though. It, it, like, why? I didn't get to play it yet, but I feel like it's a really good game, even though I haven't played it yet. From what I've heard from, what I've heard from people, they've enjoyed it. What, did you enjoy Spider Man? was i thought it was okay yeah. um i know you weren't like the biggest fan of it the 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 story was was fun like playing through the story was fun but then if you wanted to do any of the side stuff it was just like uh, i don't want to do this <laughs> right it was like go find a plant <laughs> we'll, we'll give that plant to people i don't know it, it, the side stuff is not is not good uh but tears of the kingdom is still game of the year in my heart and a lot of the gaming publications, like after the Game Awards, have given Tears of the Kingdom Game of the Year. Like IGN gave Game of the Year, and uh, I think Game Informer or GameSpot, one of them. Yeah. So, oh, Chess, what who was uh, what was your Game of the Year? Man, I don't know. I I feel like I play a lot of retro. I don't buy a lot of new games like that, uh, other than Nintendo stuff, because I only have a Switch. I didn't play Tears of the Kingdom, you know. I uh, I did I did see other people playing it. I haven't beaten uh, Breath of the Wild, but uh, I don't know how to answer that. I guess I'm, I'm stuck <laughs> playing old stuff in Mario. You could say Suica game. I mean, that's good enough. <laughs> Suica game. Like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sweet well, game. this is a perfect uh, uh, segue into our next and final topic, is which is going to be about. Uh, the games that came out this year and uh, our Nintendo review. Now, if you guys know, 
all of us get these emails. Well, sure, you should if you have a Nintendo account. At least you get all you get you uh, you get an email from Nintendo every December, and they tell you what your top play games were as far as hours played and a couple other oh, metrics. Wow. Other a couple other metrics. I know chess. You, you've been working all day, so if you have a chance while while you're sitting there, if you could pull up, if you could find that email from Nintendo, uh, it probably came it came to you within the last week or so. You know, Google Nintendo Year in Review, and it will pop up. Yeah, that too. Yeah, but if, if, take your if you can't find it, no biggie, chess. You could just talk about. The games that you okay. personally played this year, which I, we all know is Mario, uh, Mario Maker. But <laughs> well, wait, how? <laughs> uh, Nint- Nint- Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Nintendo Year in Review. Um, but yeah, so Johnny, we'll start with you while Chess is looking for that. Um, yeah. Do you want to just go over a little bit? About, you know, I know you sent all the screenshots to me, but if you want to just talk yeah, about yeah. whatever highlights you feel from your year. So this said, I played 91 games throughout the year, mm. which. I don't know. I I definitely didn't fully play 91 games. I might have loaded them up for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, but, I'm I'm in that same boat. I probably there's a lot of games I didn't actually play that it says I played. But my most played game was Tears of the Kingdom, of course, which makes sense. Yeah, uh, I had Splatoon three was up there as well. It was like my second really? most played game. Interesting. I I do play that sometimes with with some friends, and I could get into Splatoon a little bit. But my third played game is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And that was, you know, that's one of my favorite games this year. Yeah. How many hours did it tell you how many hours? 20, 25. 25. Okay. Yeah. What, what's your Which second? I was, I was trying to, so, you know, a hundred percent of the game, but I, I still wanted to get more out of it. So I was trying to do like challenges. Right. Like I was trying to right. beat the game without using a wonder flower, uh, which is impossible. Uh, yeah. And then there's, I was also trying to, to clear all the levels with the invisibility ba- badge. And I gave up on that a little bit, but <laughs> I was trying to get more out of that game because I really did enjoy it. And I just wish that there was, that there was more right. to it. Uh, my, probably my favorite, if, if, if Tears of the Kingdom didn't exist, the favorite, my favorite game that I played this year on Switch was Vampire Survivors. I don't know if either of you have played that game. Uh, no, I have. I not. haven't. Tell us about it. It is so it has like a retro vibe to it. it it's pixel art, and you play as a character, and you're just kind of, you're just trying to survive waves of enemies. I think I forget what it's called. It's like passive combat, but it's a very addictive game. It's I still play it like every every couple of days because I just want to do a run. The runs are only 30 minutes long. So you don't have to, Oh wow. You don't have to commit that much time to it. There are a ton of unlockables or a ton of characters to play as. It's all, and it's only five bucks. Like it is such a good game. I wouldn't like, I could recommend that game to anybody and cool. everybody that has bought it that I, I've recommended to. They've been, uh, they've been happy with their purchase. Cool. Uh, any anything notable? I'm sure you got a couple of stats that you you probably think are interesting. So I have like the the cal- calendar of where when I played most of, of yeah. the games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's always so that's my always, most played. Yeah, go ahead. My most played month is May, and that that was when Tears of the Kingdom came out. So that makes sense, of course. Uh, and then so it's like forty hours, forty like January is forty hours, February is forty hours. Then it drops to 16 hours in March. Then it drops to six hours in April. And that's really? because of my job. It was I a rough month. Get, yeah. So that is in the heat of busy season. I cannot play any games. And it's actually kind of sad to see it laid out like this. I don't <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's like revealing your life. It's like, oh, man. I also played Pikmin 4. I don't know if either of you played Pikmin 4. I did. Uh, if you no. didn't know, I was the, the leader of the Pikmin cult there for a little while. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a very big YouTube channel, but my, my channel blew up uh, during Pikmin the, the right, Pikmin 1 and 2. Um, I had like a live stream. My live streams sit, usually sit around 10, 15 at most. You know? I'm not really I'm not getting the big numbers over there. Um, this is on my YouTube when I switched to YouTube streaming. And, you know, I was happy with eight or 10 over there and 
my live stream blew up one day playing pick em. I, now it wasn't by accident i didn't know what i was getting myself into i just didn't think it'd be anything close to what it was but it was the, the, they shadow drop pick em one and two and i yeah. picked it up and i played it immediately because i was very intrigued um i think i had i averaged like 70 viewers for the whole three, awesome. two half two hour stream i think it was two point five thousand views which is not you know crazy views but for a live stream and for my size channel that was nuts it, i awesome. so i blew up then it didn't it didn't you know carry I, I got subscribers from it you know it did help but it's not like I was never going to be the Pikmin guy going forward. So for a month, <laughs> you didn't there, change all your content to Pikmin. Like I made that? more pick. Don't get me wrong. I made lots of Pikmin <laughs> content during that time period. And I've streamed it a bunch more times and I finished the, the f game one uh, on stream, but I did, I was like, I was never going to permanently benefit from that, you know, with Pikmin people. I was not, you know, so, but yes, uh, I, I am very much aware of the Pikmin. I played Pikmin 4, and I was disappointed with it, to be honest with you. I didn't even get close to finishing it. I Is really, it too easy? Is it it's, too easy? It's, I don't... It's a, I, don't I, I haven't played... I had to play it some more to really get make a full, you know, well-thought-out opinion about it, but I just know that I was not having a ton of fun. I had more fun playing Pikmin 1 than I did Pikmin 4. And I'm playing Pikmin 2. I started that on stream, but I didn't finish it. I have more fun playing I play that one. Then I played Pikmin Four, so I don't. I can't tell you exactly what it is. You can maybe fill some gaps, but I think when it comes down to it, I had more fun with Pikmin One and Two than I did with Four, and I never tried Three. So I wanted. I do want to try that, but yeah, it comes down to fun, man. It wasn't that fun? Sorry, <laughs> sorry you if you love it out there, but that's just my thoughts. <laughs> got anything else there? Uh, no, it's all pretty standard. I got some hours in Mario Kart. I got some hours in yeah. Smash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pokemon, which, oh man, Pokemon, dude! I binged that game. Another one. I binged that one myself. But when it came out, I had it like a hundred hundred hours in two weeks. It oh, was, wow. yeah, it's really hard to go back to. Like, if you go back and try to play it now, you're it's like, impossible. This is hard to go back to. It, it's and it was hard at the time. Don't get me wrong. It was certainly you could notice it at the time. It was not I was not blind to it, but not like you said, going back now, I I tried. I forced myself to pick it up for a half hour, and I was like. I can't. This game <laughs> is unplayable. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, Chess, I sent you a link. It, it did it. Would you find it eventually? I got it. I found it. Perfect. I found it. Beautiful. Tell us. Tell us anything you want to tell us from there. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't have to go one by yeah. one. But tell us anything you see that is like. Ooh. Yeah, I'll go one by one. Uh, first, I guess some of the games that I'm seeing here, I'm seeing some shmups, some shoot 'em ups that I bought on the Switch that are. That I that I'm kind of very happy with. Yeah. Uh, you know, other than Suica game, Shredder's Revenge. I gotta Dungeon, check this out. I have no idea what you're talking about. Zero. <laughs> the Suica game. <laughs> Suica you know, game. I have no idea. It's called the water game. watermelon, watermelon game. Melon. No idea. It's pretty <laughs> it was cool. on the free <laughs> trial like last week. I didn't. It's it's three dollars. I think. Yeah, it's well, three bucks. Well, I mean, I'm gonna buy it right this second. I, I'm gonna go look it up. You keep talking, Jess. <laughs> Three bucks. Uh, yeah, basically, you know, I did play Suica game, but I also like played Jamestown, uh, Proto Corgi, uh, and uh, Squad Fifty One. These games are shoot 'em ups. Okay. And I, I don't know. I've had a lot of fun with with the shmups on the Switch. Shmups. <laughs> but uh, basically, I was surprised that like the the number three game that I played was the Nintendo Entertainment System NSO, Nintendo Switch Online. That is very interesting. Yeah, I played a lot of that. I played a lot of the retro stuff, and especially like online with friends. I, I yeah. think that that's very fun. And I'll say this. I am a happy camper when it comes to all the selection, uh, SNES, NES, right. Sega Genesis. They, we have a good good thing here. I mean, obviously... It was a little bit different when when the with the uh, virtual console on the Wii, yeah. and I really love that. But this is better in a way, you know. This is better. Yeah, man, I'm paying eight bucks or or five dollars a, a game, like it would get yeah. so expensive. Yeah. And uh, the second game, Mega Man Legacy Collection Two. And I know that because you stream that one a lot. Yeah, I I basically played Mega Man Seven on the FPGA Mister. But then with Mega Man 8, wait, did I play 8? This is the Legacy Collection too, so it's Mega Man 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, yep. 
So, you know, and I don't have part one, but I'm going to buy it soon when it goes on sale. These these sales are ridiculously cheap for Mega Man games. Right. I bought Mega Man 11 for four bucks or Jeez. something like oh, that. Man. I've, I've I had, had those in my wish list. I want to check those out. I had I had like points accumulated, but right. it was like nine bucks. Like, what a great game. I just beat it. I played through Mega Man 1. Th- I played Mega Man 1 through 11 because I wanted to play 11. But I told myself I'm gonna play everything before then, and it was it was a quite a quite a quite an experience. It was awesome. I loved it, and now I'm playing X, so I'm very yeah, very so excited. I'm a uh, I grew up on the Super Nintendo, and my first experience with Mega Man was Mega Man X. Yeah, and I love that game to death. I could I could still play that like every day. The music, it's good. Like, it's the, so good. The like the movement, like it's, it's I'm just so, so happy good. playing it. Yeah. I, I literally like feel like if I could recommend people that have never played Mega Man, I know it's a lot, but before you play X, pick, play Mega Man 1 through 11, because now I'm playing X and it just feels so good. I'm like so happy. It's amazing. That's awesome. I can't say how, how much I love it. Uh, and I just started playing. I never really played it other than like casual. Okay, so 33 hours and 37 hours, right. Nintendo, NSO, and Mega Man Legacy Collection 2. And now, my top one, Super Mario Maker, 608 hours. Oh, <laughs> oh man. If you can't tell, Chess streams on a week, a daily basis over there. So. 608 hours. Wow. That's a lot. It's an average, that's an average of two hours a day. That's, uh, that's impressive. I told you earlier, Johnny. My, my my man grinds over there on the Twitch. He's he's doing his thing over is there, there. Is there? I know I know there's a ton of content in, in uh-huh. Mario Maker. It's like, never. Are ending. you are you always fine? Like, is it always new stuff I'm to you? Still play. Like, I literally thought, like, how am I still playing this game? And last night I played two levels by people that I kind of know. That's it. All you got to do is find a level you like and grind it and and it, they were tough levels and i beat two levels last night one of them i was already on cp so i'll i'll grind something that and it's very rewarding to to beat one level and you know stuff like that i like it levels i like too yeah there's I mean, always stuff yeah and i have pl- i have i still have plans in my i'm like i'm I'm not kidding, guys. I'm like, okay, here's my 2024 with Mario Maker 2. I know we have one more year, and I'm still like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some stuff. For example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a part, a three, a version three or a part three of a level that was very hard that I made, my hardest level ever. It took me 18 day grind to oh, beat oh this thing, and only four people have beaten it and it, it was released two years ago <laughs> and it's the hardest thing not only in maker but in gaming that i've probably ever done in my life but That's now awesome, i'm gonna though. do a part three yeah i'm gonna do a part three of that and i'm gonna do a precision super world so i'm i still have fun with the game i don't i like to, to sometimes some people right, i'm going i'm going to download it gonna download it again <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I, and Chess inspired Johnny. It's funny because that and Chess inspired me. Now I didn't pick up Mario two, Maker Two for the Switch, but I, when I was uh, at seeing my family on vacation, I was hitting up some some local game stores, retro game stores, and stuff. And I I like to check by the Wii U section because I it's a new fascination of mine. Some watch, playing some good Wii U games. I call them Wii U a retro console. Oh man, that no, hurts. No, I didn't call it. No, no, don't mix my words. <laughs> don't put words in my mouth. I didn't call it Wii U a retro console. I said I was at a retro uh, uh, game store and they were. Selling Selling Wii U co- games, so that's not okay. me saying retro. That's just the that's just the matter. The fact of the matter. Uh-huh. Anyway, I passed by and hold on, I'll pull it right here. I found. Hope you can hear me. I found this beauty, uh, nice. wrapped in plastic, brand. Well, uh, there's a story. Oh, there's a story. Uh, quote unquote, brand new. Uh, in the store, and uh, again, I'm in the East Coast. You know, visiting my family. I live out here in the the Mid Coast, if that's a thing. And uh, so I was like, all right, this is awesome. It's sealed. I'm gonna take it home. I'll I'm gonna play some Mario Maker because I know my chest loves it, and I love watching. So let me let me give it a shot. That so I, book I, in there is 
fire. Yeah, yeah. So it's got it's a little, little it's, look in the there. auto people. Yeah. It's the Wii U Super Mario Maker, uh, boxed uh, with. I think there's like Chester said, there's a cool book inside and whatever. So that's the, that's not the part of the story I want to tell. The part I want to tell is I got back home here to the East Coast. I open up this thing like okay, cool, uh, and the game isn't inside. It what? It was resealed very convincingly. It fooled the store presumably and me that oh my god good the good thing is though the game is only like five or ten bucks to buy disc wise like if you just want the disc and this was only 14 13 dollars and it's in really oh, good wow. condition like it it's in like real i think the worst damage on it is what i did when i opened it up you know so like it's in really good condition so I I think I ended up paying with after buying the disc from some on eBay separately about nineteen eighteen dollars I think that's a a fair price for for the condition yeah. that this is in like it's in yeah. immaculate condition and, and I'm not the kind of guy who keeps games in plastic unless I have oh you got that book huh that's pretty cool <laughs> there it is yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I don't know I don't know if this book is in there but this was yeah you got it off of Club Nintendo. Wait. Like back when Club Nintendo oh, was a thing. Really? Oh wow! And I have it. It, has, it came with the box. Yeah. Yeah, it has like ideas. Yeah. And, and stuff in there. Hey, right. Yeah. There it is. Here it is. Oh yeah. Okay. Thought, <laughs> oh maybe. Oh, you I know what? It's because mine. I buy di- it's because I bought a digital. I buy everything digital, so I had to like. Oh, you know, like, I see. That, like, that I bought it, and then That's they cool. sent it to me. That's cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, but, yeah, uh, that, that's cool. Uh, the, Go ahead. The original Mario Maker, I, I played a ton of that, and uh, you know I, it's my name fun. is John Amiibo, so I, I uh, you know buy a lot of Amiibo, and it had all the Amiibo costumes. They all had like, yeah. different different noises and stuff, and I thought that was uh, it was really cool. Yeah, the, uh, I wish they would have brought that to two, and I'm hoping I'm hoping we get a three. I mean. Yeah. Me too, and I, I, I wish I, I think that they're gonna bring back the costumes because that's everybody says that, bring back the costumes. You know, like what happened? Yeah, uh, chess. Anything else that was on your game, your year that you want to bring up? No, yeah. that was it. Those are my top three. Six hundred hours plus Mario Maker two. That's that's incredible. Mine's gonna be mine's gonna be pretty predictable here. Let me just I'm clicking it. I've already seen this, but I haven't seen it for a few weeks, so I'm just gonna. Uh, first game of the year I played was was Splatoon, which is weird because uh, I did play that a lot last year, but not a ton when it came out. I didn't play it a ton uh, this year, um, and that shows in my analytics here. Sixty three total games, four hundred sixty three hours. So I played Switch for four hundred sixty hours this year, which I feel like if I want if I could look at last year's, uh, if I could, I'm not sure if you can. That's probably down because I because I didn't stream. At barely at all this year, like in, in my in my past, I I mean I think I streamed at least 150 hours of Breath of the Wild in 2021. So I mean like I I have definitely played more Switch in past years. I feel like, um, but this so across but I, 63 games, you played less than Chess played of one one game. Game, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I love video games. I really do. Um, but I I am not a marathon gamer. I am of not not. I don't want to say casual, but I play games casually. I, I very casually will pull a game up to kill some time. Uh, only when it's certain games, which we'll get to in a second, there are certain games that cap, uh, capture my, my interest. There's very few, but the ones that do, I do play for many hours. So uh, for, that's uh, that's less hours than I would have thought. But that's also because I streamed way less this year. Um, so, drum roll please. My top three games of 2023... 31 hours of Animal Crossing. I'm still playing that one. Nice. <laughs> kind, kind of. I got back into it a little bit this year. 31 hours of it. Uh, game number two, 64 hours of... Anyone guess? Anyone guess? Anyone guess? 64 hours. Breath of the Wild. 64 nice. hours. And that was the prep for what's to come. I, that 64 hours was me getting ready and pumping myself up for Tears of the Kingdom, which is my number one game this year. Uh, 188 hours as of nice. whenever I'm not sure if this updates to real time or if this is like two weeks ago because I've definitely played more hours since then. So I'm probably close to 190 at this point. What was yours, Johnny? What? How many hours did you play? I think 89. 
Yeah. So I'm, here's the thing about me. I only have like 348 hours total or something. Yeah, oh, that's even less I than like me. talking about games more than I like uh-huh. playing games. <laughs> You're talking you. to me <laughs> through a podcast every yeah. freaking week. Uh, I have 911 total. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a lot you're, of hours, you're Jess. more of a gamer than us. <laughs> you can wave your gamer uh, card proudly. <laughs> but I also have, so I also, you know, they, they give these year reviews for all the systems. And I also have an Xbox One and I also have a, a PlayStation One. But I yeah, still think yeah. my total hours did not, I, I might have had 600 total hours across everything. Right. All right. Uh, moving on with my list. It tells me a little bit about. The ga- oh, that, oh, that's weird. Okay, uh, gaming trends. Who cares? Uh, May, of course, I played the most gaming in May this year, predictably. 108 yeah. hours, which is 99.9%. <laughs> it doesn't tell me that, but I know. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, maybe there's well, a couple... Maybe you were playing Breath of the Wild those first 13 I, I was gonna days s- or whatever. I was going to say, there's probably a couple hours of Breath of the Wild before then for sure, but nothing really else. Zelda rules my life right now. Uh, my favorite game in the year. I wonder what it is. Tears of the Kingdom of Force is going to tell me that. Um, okay, I can download my stats. That's so fun. I should do that. Ooh, thanks, Nintendo. Fix your online structure, you fucking piece of dick. Uh, ooh, I gold, it tells you gold points. Anything else really interesting here? No, not really. It looks like it's over. So, yeah, that's very predictable for me. I mean, Tears of the Kingdom ruled my life this year. It really did. And I plan on playing another 200 hours next year. For sure, I'm not. I'm gonna binge Zelda. I'm only. Uh, I was gonna ask you too, Johnny. And chess. Did you, first of all, did you even play Tears of the Kingdom? No, I haven't. Yeah, I didn't expect you to. I know you're not like you're Mario. You you're the Mario no, no, no. Take a card away. No, 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 no. Here's my thing. You know why I haven't played it? To be honest, it's the streaming, and I'm not. Ha- I don't have time for it. Oh, yeah, it's been that. I want to play. I think that Breath of the Wild is amazing. I loved it and I streamed it and it took two months away of my life. <laughs> I literally was like, that was my pandemic game. Yeah. And I streamed that on, I, I, and, and it was perfect, but I had so much stuff going on. I was like, I can't get addicted to this game right now. <laughs> I'm going to wait. And I waited for Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. So my prediction is I'm going to one day jump into Tears of the Kingdom. I want to go back to the Breath of the Wild first to finish some stuff, and it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm just a little... I'll be a little bit late, is all. You let me know when that is. I'll be there. I want to see it. Okay. It's, it's, it's when Tears of the Kingdom Deluxe comes out on, on the Switch, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 90 bu- $90. Tears of the Kingdom. $90. 90, Tears of the Kingdom U Deluxe. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really do want to get back into Tears of the Kingdom. I, I, beat, I, beat, the, I beat the story... But I still have a lot of shrines to get, still have a lot of um, nice stuff right. to discover. So there's still a lot for me to do. Uh, for sure. Uh, one last thing before we end it off here. Uh, I, w- I don't like to get too negative on the show. You know, I like to keep things positive. We're fun having Nintendo. We're talking Nintendo. It's gamers. But but I want to say this. What if there's one? If you, don't, if you don't have to name one, if there isn't. But what game this year did you play, either for the first time or just in general, that you're like? This game is bad. I don't like this game. Any any games that come to mind for either. We can start with Johnny because I feel like he probably have an easier time with this, Mister Controversy. Kirby, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. No, no, oh, the, the other, other Kirby. Oh, then the, what is it called? Uh, it was like the remaster of the Wii yeah, game. Yeah. I just hate Kirby games. <laughs> and <laughs> well, I I always say that I don't know. I always rag on Kirby and man, people get mad at me, but I will say after hearing all these Nintendo year in reviews and seeing a bunch of people with Nintendo year in review, nobody has Kirby in their top games. Play. No. So maybe like little kid, my nephew would, I'm sure he yeah. does. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, have to, I have to realize that that like those games are not for me. Right. Right. Not for a, a 36 year old man. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. for my eight-year-old nephew but yeah that game and then also advanced wars i thought i would love advanced wars but it is not is it disappointing that that, that disappoints me if it is because i actually did want to try it i haven't gotten to it yet but yeah i'm a big fire emblem fan and it's made by the same uh team and i don't know advanced wars it's just different 
I feel like I was on a mission for 45 minutes. I'm like, this is way, way too long for one mission. <laughs> I I feel you. I don't know. I, I do. I still want to give it a try. I, I like to get every first party game I can get on Nintendo. Cause I, I, I'm not, I'm, I, like I said, I don't marathon games, but I love to try stuff, especially stuff I haven't tried before. Like that's how I found Zelda. And now it's like my favorite thing in the world. So like, it's a good method to did do. Did you get Metroid prime? I did. And I love it. I do. I, it's hard. It's hard. Okay. The thing with Metroid prime is that, Oh man, that's, that's a sleeper of this year. Holy shit. That came out this Holy year. Holy shit. Yeah. What did a you get? Metroid yeah. Prime Remastered? Yeah, that's Metroid Remastered. That's what I got for on the Switch this No, year. I haven't. Oh, I sorry. want to. I want to. But I haven't got I haven't I haven't gotten it. I would love to. Because I know you, you had said that you, you played Yeah, that I played it. And I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the sleeper I this year. Not. I, it's not in my list, but I, I I did play it a lot. The problem with that game though is that once you play it and then don't and then leave and then come back, it's very difficult to kind of pick up where you were. So that's one reason I haven't finished it yet. That's that's one of the reasons I didn't finish much of Dread is because like I, I I don't marathon games and 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 I didn't love Dread that much, so I didn't binge it. I didn't play it for long periods, and I kind of got frustrated going back and forth and losing my spots. So Metroid Prime, even though that's that problem still exists for me, it's a me problem, not a Metroid problem. I know that's me problem. However, what a masterpiece of a game that remastered, especially. Uh, really, really, it's just holy crap! What a beautiful game on the Switch, and what a great game overall um, now i'm gonna play it i want to play it it's great and plus it's 40 but it's not even full price it's it's like yeah. damn they, they could have charged me full price for that and i would have paid it because damn it's good i paid 60 bucks for that kirby game <laughs> you i don't know why you did that. i love dread <laughs> yeah i dread's phenomenal oh my god i loved it Anything you didn't love, Chess? <laughs> anything this year i was thinking that but i'm gonna say it collectively I don't know. I mean, not this year, I guess, but Mario Golf and then Mario Soccer and then Switch Sports. I like Switch Sports. I had a bad experience with everything. I feel like they were very lazy overall, yeah. you know? That's that's my, especially like Mario Golf, it, it looked very bad. Like I felt like, and then you only get like six courses. I don't and know. It didn't just, feel very Mario- S courses like they were just kind of yeah. golf courses. Yeah, and I actually love the music of of the soccer game, and I love the feel. But then something kind of happened. It it, it just kind of stopped being fun. Or and then I I remember watching some YouTube videos critiquing it, and I was like, that's why I didn't like it. You know, everything looks so bland. And then the Wii, the 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 bowling. I remember buying it day one, streaming it, and be like, are you kidding? They can't let me play with you bowling? <laughs> to me, that was the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. And I'm not one to, to, to get mad and to, to, to talk like right. smack of games and stuff because I want to keep it chill. But I was literally like so disappointed. And then they gave us an update with with the ability to like create a lobby sort of thing and I still didn't have fun. I don't know. It kind of so sucks out a, the fun a little bit when you play a game like that. It's a collective yeah. Nintendo and their sports stuff Yeah, on the Switch. I feel yeah, you, man. I hope, I hope they're taking the feedback to heart because every sports title they had that, you know, they released with not much content and then they had the drip feed of content yeah. after the fact. I was so disappointed in the soccer game. I love yeah. Strikers on GameCube and Me too. Oh my god, Wii. I love that game on the Wii on the GameCube. Oh my god. So, I yeah, that was disappointing and then yeah, I, I just hope if they bring if they have another sports title that they fix it. Like I would love to to have to bring baseball back, but hopefully better. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, uh, we went so long on this, and I really appreciate you guys' time. I, we're not even going to do an after show. This is like the first time we've never done an after show because we've been on for so long. This is our normal time when we leave. Uh, so I'm actually going to sign off not only for the episode but for the stream as well. So uh, 
thank you to Chess and John Ebo for being here for this uh, this last stream of 2023 for Drip and Jeep. Uh, it's been a big year for us. Uh, you know, lots of growth. We really appreciate you, appreciate you guys sticking around. Appreciate our guests for being here, joining us throughout the year. All of you guys, not just Johnny and Chess, but all of you guys who joined this year, we really appreciate you. I'm not going to name one by one. It's been a few. I got. I can't remember them all. But uh, but we really appreciate you guys uh, for joining this year, making it a fun year. Um, again, last stream 2023, guys. So we'll see. The next time we're going to see you guys on a live stream is going to be in January. Uh, Chess and Johnny, hopefully at some point in 2024. Uh, we're talking about, of course. We're, we're talking with you guys on the podcast and we're talking about the switch freaking two. That'd be great. Please. Uh, for the <laughs> love of God, give me something to talk about. Nintendo 2025. It's bad for business. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, in, uh, Nintendo direct in 2020, uh, January, 2024, 2025 switch two. Nah, it'd be like the worst news. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd be excited, but also sad. Yes. Agreed. Uh, that's it for us, guys. Uh, again, Drip, hopefully you get well soon, buddy. I'm sure you're sleeping right now because it was uh, you got a rough illness there. Uh, and, yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for your sponsor, Nexigo. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you guys. Oh, one thing, too. Uh, merch store, drippandjeeb.shop. Uh, go to that store. Get some merch. It's fun. It's cool. We're we're it's we're building a brand empire, dripping jeep. Uh, so make sure to if don't go to the website. If nothing else, for the chat GPT uh, descriptions of us as people and podcasts. That's very interesting. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna sign off for now, and we're going to see you guys in 2024. Thank you for having us. You rock. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, see you guys next year. Happy New Year's.